What's up, everybody? This is your friendly neighborhood, Scotty Mo, here to tell you that this is... <laughs> This going to be a weird episode because we had an episode recorded. It was a very good time. We talked Seth Rollins' Twitter meltdown that he's since apologized for. We talked Fighter Fest predictions and then we ended up losing like half of the audio for it. So luckily we still have the audio for JWF. So at the end of the show you will have that JWF action that you all crave. But instead of a normal episode, we decided to start off this show, our first 40 minutes as it were, talking um, talking about our trip down to Fighter Fest. So it's me, Dylan, it was recorded after midnight in a car, so the audio is not the best. But we wanted to make sure you guys had something this week. So we talk Fighter Fest, we talk our trip, we talk hanging out with Mega Ren, which was super cool. And also, I have no idea when our episode's going to go up of Matt Mania. But if you do want to hear us talk about Seth Rollins melting down on Twitter or our Fighter Fest predictions, we were on the Matt Mania podcast, uh, their live edition from uh, AEW, not AEW, from CEO. Make sure to check that out because we'll be there soon. But. As for now, why don't we just get into a little bit of that show we know and love called Fight Boys. So welcome to a very special episode of Fight Boys, the show about professional and not so professional wrestling. I'm your road dog, the bad boy of podcasting, Scotty Moore. Uh, I am the designated driver of this podcast, the Dylan. Which I do thank you for being, especially last night, the designated driver of this podcast. So, 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 so weird day yesterday, and also I guess today we're, we're we turned into dining buddies with Mega Rand and you know, <laughs> yeah, which is which is not somewhere I expected my life to go. But I'm gonna. I'm, I'm, I mean, it it slaps. Yeah. <laughs> Also, uh, you learned the phrase slaps this weekend. Yeah. Uh, which, which I'll stop using immediately after you get on a plane back to Atlanta. I want you to know that. Yeah. But, yeah, I came down here for Fighter Fest. We had an entire episode recorded, and then Twitch decided to be an asshole and not have any footage for me to use. So we just decided to do a little wrestling road diary of our uh, trip to Fighter Fest, and also we could actually talk about how good Fighter Fest was. Some good times. Uh, so yeah, I missed my initial flight because I'm that asshole. No, you, you missed your initial flight because you you made the mistake of thinking you could wake up early. Like I, in, in retrospect, given the fact that like what you told me about your what, what I heard about what happened with your flight to Double or Nothing, and the fact that your wife had to wake you up and then Blake was just already up and then you guys just like hurry to the airport, I should have like called you. Yeah, and done something. But I was like, no, no, no. He made it that time. That was probably just the one. Now I know for the future, be like, dude, just don't take a flight before ten a.m. Yeah, yeah. Just well, no, I'm usually good about it because I can just stay awake. Yeah, no, it just didn't happen. But now that there's a baby involved, yeah, it's impossible. So you, you gotta, you gotta learn to adjust. Mm -hmm. Anyway, you got. You got to my house at 2 a.m. the next day. After uh, a very nice Uber driver told me about all of the deadly crashes he saw while going 80 miles per hour down the road. And I was like, hmm, this seems perfectly safe. He's like, yeah, man, I saw a Hyundai get disintegrated yesterday. <laughs> Off. Okay, thanks, man. That's that's all cool. Thanks. I really wanted to hear Dean, Dean Ambrose's theme music while I <laughs> rode in this, in, this, in this Uber. Uh, no, so we, uh, I took, I took time off of work Friday because we got invited to be on Matt Mania's live show from CEO. Which hopefully will be up sometime in the next week. We don't know how good the quality will be because we had two microphones and four jackasses that love talking. <laughs> To be, to be fair, in order to limit you, I did have my hand on our mic for the majority of it. We were basically holding hands with a microphone in between it. We kept trying to take it from each other. That was that was that was fun. That was really that was really good. We talked about a bunch of things. Uh, I earned street cred through my love of Power Stone, which is which is always good to have. Like you know. 
And also, after that show, we ended up meeting the guy behind the StarCast Twitter account. Yeah. yeah. Which, which was made me promptly be like, don't kill me. I know our... It was just a fun little rivalry, buddy. He's like, no, no, no. He's like, no, I understand. And I'm like, okay. Well, then that means I get to ramp it up for StarCast already. There you go. There you go. We saw that. I met the... Uh, met Eric and uh, Zyde, who do do a lot of merch stuff. They made, like, some... They made some custom satin jackets for CEO, which, like, for, uh... For, for Matt Mania, and they just had a picture of Jabaley's face on one end. I was like, ah, that's why I'm not gonna buy this. Yeah, because there's a, just a random picture of... Of, J- of Jabaley everywhere. It's bad enough that I have to go past JFC and Jabotle in, yeah, yeah. <laughs> in this convention center. I uh, just want... I want a... I want a personal apology for you... For the years of calling me the worst show of all time, because fucking Jabaley <laughs> outclasses me by all ranks. Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. To be fair, Jabaley also has his own fucking convention, so when you get to that level, you shill all you fucking want. <laughs> Look, you haven't been to Scotty Con? No one has been to Scotty Con. <laughs> no one ever will. Anyway, so yeah, we, we, did, we did Matt Mania. That was really cool. And then we were we were going to go to uh, one restaurant, and then we got down past the convention center. And then- oh wait, wait, hold on. Can we also say at this point was the turning point? Because at Starcast we hung out with Matt Mania, hung out with Mega Ran, all of them, mm. and they'll never listen to this, so we can gush. Uh, and they just kind of abandoned us, and we thought that would be the same thing this year. And then they're like. Oh yeah, no, we want to go eat with you guys. Yeah. And we went, oh fuck, okay. Yeah. Neo, Neo was like, yeah, we really like you guys, and I was like, oh really? <laughs> Why? <laughs> I was like, oh, that, that means way more than it should as a twenty-eight-year-old man. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> uh, but uh, yeah, no, we were we were going, we were gonna go to we were gonna go to Bubba Gums. We got close, and there was a wing house on the right. And then I think I think it was Mega Ran who turned. It was like, yeah, we should go in here. And then I also turned. He was pointing right at some girl's ass. <laughs> so we abandoned we abandoned shrimp for chicken and ass. And like there was no, that wasn't a bad call. And it was it was it was this weird this weird thing of like, yeah, I'm just gonna sit here with like you know, Nerdcore, these guys who do this, and we're all just gonna sit here and just be like complete dudes in this yeah, yeah. in this place, just drink, eat chicken, stare, <laughs> <spy. laughs> just stare. At one point, Mega just went completely silent because he was right next to the bar area where all of the waitresses were walking back and forth and we're like, Ran y'all right? He's like, I got a nosebleed. (laughs) It's it's fine. It's fine. We did that. We hung out with them. He went to the beach. We went and got shit-faced in Disney Springs as is tradition when Scotty visits me. Uh... But I, I have a bartender. Uh, yeah. Usually we travel a lot between bars. This time we stuck at the Edison... And drank so much. At one point, a fairy came by and gave me absinthe after... Dylan, I don't know if you were drunk or this is just how comfortable you are at the Edison. You yelled at everybody, but only their name. So you're like, Eric, 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 come here, Eric, Eric, fairy, fairy lady, fairy. I never yelled at her. I yelled at Mikey to get her. (laughs) Because I knew you, I was like, oh, wait, the, the abs, I forgot about the absinthe fair. Oh, Scotty will, Scotty will fucking love this. Mikey, Mikey, get the absinthe fair. Tell her, tell her this, tell her this homeless looking man is interested. <laughs> tell her this man in Zumba pants yeah, really yeah. wants some absinthe. And then she came over and was like, I love your nails. I'm like, bitch, thanks. <laughs> so we did that and we got up, we went uh, today. Uh, we saw the end of the CEO music panel that, that Mega was on. Yeah. Uh, and then he was like, y'all want to go eat? And we were like, okay, I guess this is just the thing we do now. We just we just have food with Matt Mania. Also, for nerdcore fans out there, Shaver the fucking Dark Lord was just there, and I was like, oh, I gotta play this calm, and like, I don't love his music, but it's fun. It's, fu- it's okay, don't worry. Uh, yeah, but like, relating back to wrestling, he did, the first show I saw Schaefer at, he did a full-on freestyle over Samoa Joe's theme. Oh, God. So, yeah, Schaefer wait, is... The, wait, wait, the good one or the original one that we make fun of? <laughs> no, no, the, uh, the good one. Oh, okay, Destroyer? Not, okay. not the... <laughs> the, uh, Samoa Joe Pulp Fiction theme. Yeah. Uh, yeah, so we had 
food again, and then we went to Oh uh, Fighter Fest. Oh, I will say my the line, my favorite line of the weekend from me was to uh, Mega Ran because we went to Bubba Gump's and I said, "Hey, this is probably the most liked Bubba you have." And he went, "Damn it, you right though." It was, but, a, it was so great getting his take on what happened. He was like, "I thought I was just gonna go out like interrupt Bubba." And then I was going to introduce Flip, and then that was going to be it. And they were like, "Well, we would really like to back ourselves into a, a, a book ourselves into a corner with this juice thing." And like, it was just like it was like it ended up being like an like a ten like a six man like hardcore. I don't I don't know, man. Like it's, <laughs> it was the best. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, so then we did go to Fighter Fest. However, there was one gentleman who's in this car who almost did not go to Fighter Fest. Listen, it is not my fault that the Ticketmaster app just shit itself because of how many people were using it. Fortunately, the will call office at at the uh, the convention center for Daytona really cool, really professional. They were like on it. I was like, hey, listen, what do you do if the app doesn't look? Like, oh, what's your last name? Oh, here, I just printed it off for you. Have a good day. I was like. Bitch, thank you. Yeah. I, I walked. I walked right in. The hilarious part was there was this giant line for one door. Oh yeah, yeah. And then there was another door that you just walk right in. <laughs> I could see the long ass line, and I wanted to be like, "You can, guys, you can come over here." It was the. It was great. We go in. We get our. Go to our seats. Um, you get upset because I threw away your fago. Yeah, you threw away my peach fago. <laughs> Because we just decided to do a tribute to, for all the juggalos and juggalettes before we went into the venue. Woo woo. Yeah. So, uh, you know, Scotty, as is mentioned, had better seats than me uh, originally. Because I was in, like, I was on the last row of the first level. I was on the first seat, though, so I was right next to the stairs, which sucked dick because I believe 400 people walked in front of me <laughs> during this show. And I tried to stand up and look over, and then the guy behind me was like, hey, you want to you wanna sit down? I paid good money for the seat. And I was like... I want to be able to see. It was like, what do you want me to do about it? I wanted to be like, you could also fucking stand, badass. <laughs> but I didn't. Uh, because right next to me, in the, in the row next to me, there was just an empty row. Like, the last row was just empty all the way across. And I was like, okay, if it gets a few things in and, like, nobody shows up and I know that's empty, I'm going to go there. But then this other dude went. He just booked it from where he was. He was like, I, he saw the opportunity. B- bless him. I didn't have, the, I didn't have the, the moxie that he did. Then he invited his friends, and there were two people. I was like, okay, cool. So I slowly scoot my way in until I'm, like, third seat in. And then he, turned, he just invited, like, all of his friends from wherever else they were. So there was, like, six of them at the other end. So it no longer looked suspicious. Yeah. It looked like there was a large group that had, had, like, gotten a bunch of seats together, and then, like, nobody else had shown up. So I had this great view of, like, with, like, a bunch of elbow room. Oh, it was the best. Can I just say, to, in, to interrupt the Fighter Fest story, I've never been in a Prius, and I love the fact that your car is telling you currently, take a fucking break. <laughs> oh, yeah, no, if I if you go over, like, the like the white line, yeah. you can sense that because of the reflectors, it'll, it'll like, warn you. Unfortunately, I-4 is, like, this twisty, turny, turny piece of shit. There's no way to completely stay, stay within the white lines and do any amount of, like, speed. Yeah. But uh, going back to Fighter Fest after the quick Prius report from the Fight Boys, yeah, you ended up with the better seats because yes, I was closer in seat number, I, but I was also closer to the floor, which I was fine with. I'm used to being at wrestling shows and like if they go to the outside, cool. I guess I'm just not gonna see this. I can anticipate. I can see like, oh, he's upside down. He's probably getting suplexed. Yeah. But unfortunately, everyone around me did not share that sentiment. So during the show, they are screaming, Turn on the screen! Turn on the fucking screen! And I'm like, look, look they're in the ring right now. Why are you, quit yelling about this? Because I, apparently none of them had worked in TV production before and realized it'd probably be weird to be showing the exact same match in the exact same frame you're gonna get like a weird tunnel going on if you do that so it was it was because unlike at double or nothing where they were like the back screens yeah there was just the two like there were just the two main ones that they had set up because it's it's not like an actual like arena arena yeah so i know that was why but there were multiple times where it was just like oh come on dude but 
Well, it, it was because they were also teasing us because they would show replays up there because like there's no reason to keep the screen yeah. on the fight on the AEW logo for that. And then it would immediately go back to the AEW logo and they'd start booing. I'm like, don't boo because that's gonna make the people at home think something that we hate the match. Yeah. I don't want to be those assholes. But speaking of the Fighter Fest card, uh, pretty pretty good shit. Holy shit! Yeah, I'd argue as far as compared to the show last year that was New Japan. Yeah. To oh, decades better than that. I mean, well, that was because the one last year, like, a it was a half empty building. Yeah. Because like. No. It was hastily thrown together. It was hastily thrown together. And while all the matches were very good, like, like there wasn't a hot crowd for it. The production wasn't as good because there wasn't, like, you know, Tony Khan's money behind it. Yeah. Which I don't know if you're aware. Makes a huge goddamn difference. <laughs> yeah. Uh, but that was, the, that was the whole thing. I was like, this is really... Really good. So, like, uh, you know, you want to you want to run through the card? Yeah, yeah, we can run through the card really quickly. We'll, we'll, we'll do it chronologically because I kind of remember everything that happened. Okay, good. Because I don't. Yeah. So it started off with so it was like a pre-show and a main show, and for some reason the pre-show kicked off with Best Friends versus SCU versus Private Party. Oh, that's right. That was the first match on the card. That was the very first match. And as I predicted, Private Party got over huge. Oh yeah. Because they were doing shit that I'm like that they, they these aren't humans. Yeah, yeah. they're rubber. No, yeah, yeah, they're two rubber. They're two rubber boys that like do tag team moves. That's it yeah. Was, it was it was so so good. There were so many good like solid spots. I forgot how fucking weird the best friends entrance music was and their th- screen thing. And I was like, God, if you don't know anything about wrestling, you must be confused as shit right now. At the screen, just going into like stock like medical footage, like you know, there's like commercials for like you know buy whatever a Drex, and it's just like two people holding hands on a beach and shit, like a family, together. and then like an alien, and then a <laughs> Yeah. Like, then a ghost. Yeah, it just just like fucking splices to that. It's just like what the shit. Well, well, this like almost house music is going on for their music. It's uh. By the way, did did Chuck Taylor look in worse shape than you than the last time we saw him? Yeah, a little bit. He's got that. He's got that WCW money. He's not going to the gym. He's got the dad bod rocking fully. Fully. Um, yeah, I, I, I really enjoyed that. All of the matches I enjoyed a lot, but it was really weird being around people who were... Uh, some of them weren't familiar with, like, AEW people at all. I guess they had only come for, like, Moxley and shit. Yeah. And then there are people who weren't cheering for the best friends, which to our show, which I don't know if we're going to do a dust that watch this week. I guess we can't. But to uh, to our show, it was really... It, it was weird to be like, how do you guys not know the best shit of all time? How do you not know about these two weird motherfuckers mm-hmm. who, like, just hug and yeah. all that? They're like, why are they popping for these two grown men hugging? This is some bullshit. And here's the shitty thing. This does mean they're probably not winning the tag titles. Because it's like, oh, they got the first round by. That means they get to advance. Uh, that means they're going to lose real quick, probably. I mean, it, it depends on how their their thing with the Dark Order goes. Because, you know, after after the Best Friends won, video on screen. Popped, Eva, popped hard. Popped hard when the Best Friends won. Strong Zero, baby. Yeah. <laughs> Crack that can of Strong Zero. Anyway, um, freaking Dark Order cuts up. Eva Lono cuts a promo. Fucking Stu Grayson interrupts him. Talks about, like, something... And then... Oh, oh, yeah, no, no, no. What it was was Evil Uno was like, we're going to make it real quick. And then Grayson goes, no! <laughs> we're going to make it last. And I was like, okay. But that just made it creepier because they were like, you are the first on our list of people. And you always remember your first. And then, and then Stu said that. And I was like, you're making this sexual in a weird way that I'm not 100% comfortable because you're shirtless and ha- like, yeah. like and ripped. You got your kink minions. <laughs> yeah. You got your, you got your, you got your gip minions behind you. Who then... Like, like you know, Evil Uno snaps his fingers, the lights go out, lights come back on, gimps are there. By the way, everyone ruined the darkness by pulling out their phone flashlights. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Bunch of, <laughs> bunch of fucking smarks. And them all, like, chanting, like, we can see you. I'm like, yeah, but go along with the fucking show, assholes. Yeah, so the gimps show up, lights go out, gimps go away. Everybody's upset that freaking Dark Order doesn't come out and attack him again. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Because, you know, they're entitled. I would just love if afterwards, like, the best friends grabbed the mic and, like, what? why us? There are, like, a lot... There are other teams you could have picked. Why are you going for us? 
I guess I guess we could do this. It's like, all right, I guess, I guess we're doing this right now. Uh, so that was match number no- one. Match number two, uh, the librarian versus Allie, which... Wait, it was supposed to be Kylie Ray originally, right? Like, I didn't, I didn't fucking imagine that. Oh, was that originally the match? Yeah, because when we did the prediction series, it was definitely Smiley Kylie versus. In fact, okay, so we're gonna have to throw that match out. Okay. I didn't even get to. I didn't even get to pick the right people. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Anyway, uh, turns out the librarian's a heel. Also, it turns out that the crowd hates books because. Yeah, yeah. Comes- hold on, hold on. I don't think she was a heel. <laughs> Which, but I want to go no, back. She was a heel. I want to go back to when we originally pitched things, and I'm like, it has to be a heel, and you guys were like, no, it could be a baby face. Fuck off, no. And these uneducated masses. I she, got, she comes out and she's just, because everybody's all into it, like, yeah, sh- yeah, silence. And she's just like, you like to be let's talk about the magic of books. What well, no, no. Like, she started with, <laughs> yeah, she started with like, we all love video games here. And I'm like, yeah, okay, good. Leave is appealing to her fan base. And then she goes, you know what else is entertaining? Books and I'm like, yeah, I love books. And then the crowd around me just goes, boo, fuck books. I'm like, Damn. we can't read. We, we can't, can't read. read. I was like, what the god? This is everything wrong with America in one promo. It was like going back to the Seamus uh, Damian Sandow rivalry again and be like, why are you cheering for this? Freaking. Also, also, Peter Avalon threw a bunch of stuff and was like, by the way, that was the best part. She would give, she would tell, do a promo and then Peter Avalon would very loudly reiterate the last word of her promo. Oh, yeah. And it was, it was so amazing. Well, yeah, we can take this moment to talk about the set for the beginning of the show because it was fucking ridiculous. <sighs> I feel bad for these four women they just had come stand in bikinis as there were shitty tents all over the fucking stage. The Firefest tents. That yeah. was great. Yeah, yeah. And then uh, at one point, two of the they couldn't afford two of the girls anymore, so they were replaced with mannequins. And then Peter Avalon was found in one of the tents sleeping. Then I don't know what happens, but he gets upset and just starts throwing tents and beating up mannequins. Uh, and then, a, and then a match happened. It was, it was, a, it was an okay women's match. It was, it was fine. They were, they were doing the, they were, they were doing a thing, and like Peter was there, kind of like half interfering. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, freaking Leva Bates hit a pedigree. I was, I popped hard for that. Oh yeah, yeah. I popped hard for, I popped hard for the librarian using the pedigree. I don't know why. Uh, but then Ali won with a super kick because why not? Uh, and after like faked interference, like Peter tries to throw. Lay of the book overshoots it. Allie catches it, then Allie throws it to her and does like an RVD, like freaking Van Daminator, but with a freaking uh, a book, book into the face, book into the face. I was like, all right. The person, ne- the woman next to me was like, really? And then, I, and, th- and then like, like immediately, I was like, yes, yes, that is that is what happened. That is what happened. And so uh, match after that, shit, I gotta try and run up was uh, CD versus Shima. Was that it? I thought there was another pre-show match. Yeah, uh, we'll remember it if we remember it. Uh, but yeah, CD versus Shima, which was and I was anticipating to be like that is a that, that was a solid technical match. You could tell those were two people that two men who have known each other for literally two decades. Yeah, yeah. Like that was a that was a smooth match with the except there was a, all the only botch was that CD had an arm drag that was a little too deep and he didn't get the full pop on the rotation. That was it. That was the only bad thing about that match. Also, I popped hard for seeing a Meteora in person. Oh yeah, like yeah. yeah. Full blown, full blown top rope Meteora. Oh, it was fantastic. Yeah, yeah. Sold that like death. Also, the Angel's Wings apparently isn't going to be his finisher because Shima kicked out of that. Oh, yeah. And, I if, think a, I, and if a 40-something-year-old former Dragon Gate wrestler is kicking out of it, you know he ain't getting to the top. I'm going to say probably BME, oh, maybe, yeah. is his finisher. It, it, which I love anyway. Yeah, I mean, that's more his character right now. It's more flamboyant of yeah. a move as opposed to Angel's Wings, which is just deadly. Yeah. But a uh, very, very good match. Shima went over. Uh, we get Shima versus... I get Shima versus Kenny Omega in, like, two weeks. Yeah, yeah. Uh, then after that, we had a match that I was nervous for, not as a viewer, but as someone in the audience, because I didn't want to have to start policing motherfuckers, and it was Nyla Rose versus... Rio versus Yuka 
Sakazaki. Sakazaki, yes, yeah. there it was. I was like, oh, I'm gonna mess this. Oh no, wait! I, f- I remember what the last match of the pre-show was. It was Jabale versus Michael Nakazawa. My my favorite part of that was I can see on my phone like the fucking way oh, the oh, wave yeah. pattern. We're gonna, and we... to, we're gonna have to we're gonna have to edit the shit out of that. But I'm an unabashed Michael Nakazawa fan. So yeah, whatever. It was surprisingly. Yeah, you could tell. You could tell that Jabali, after he rehabbed his leg after the fuck clusterfuck that was last year, yeah, spent like the last year being like, I can't, I can't screw this up enough. Like next year, I have to do this again. I have to like, I have to make up for this because that was god awful. And it's clear you, he's not a strong wrestler. No, you couldn't be after less than a year of probably not actual wrestling training and then running CEO. Yeah, yeah. Like, yeah. So <laughs> who do you think you are? And so like they they did the best thing they could, which was make it a hardcore match and just d- pull out the mu- it was the ultimate CEO like yeah, yeah. bullshit Jabali beat Michael Nakazawa with a fighter stick that was that was with that a was fighter awesome. stick he pulls out a dice bag yeah it's, and it's, instead of doing thumbtacks throws d20s to body slam him on yes and then and then Michael Nakazawa does my does my he did the bo- he did the baby oil spot uh, where he like slipped out of it and then also made Jabali trip which yeah yeah, yeah. beautiful Beautiful callbacks, and uh, then, then, he, then he then he pulls his underwear off because <laughs> of course because of course the best part was, best part was Jabali turned heel at the end of that because Michael Nakazawa actually hits Bryce Remsberger who's the perfect referee for that match oh yeah yeah with uh, hits him with the the underwear he's blinded Jabali kicks Michael Nakazawa I'm pretty sure he shoot kicked him in the dick <laughs> also my, also, Jabali did a German suplex. Michael Nakazawa landed directly on the top of his goddamn skull. Oh, yeah. My, Michael sold that like a gunshot. I was like, oh, <laughs> my God. it probably was. Yeah. <laughs> anyway, uh, kicks him, shoot kicks him in the dick, tries to roll him up with a, uh, with a not even a small package. I forget what it's called, where you, where you wrap the arm and then you, like, roll over and does it. Uh, but, you know, Bryce is out. Everybody counts to five. And then it's like one, two, and then... And then in the perfect counter, Michael Nakazawa, still with his underwear, the thong on arm in hand, puts it in, in Jabali's face, reverses the, the pin, and then rolls Jabali up, getting back his uh, getting yeah. back his win. That was that was an excellent. Also, Michael, Nakaz- Michael Nakazawa um, freaking cut a promo beforehand where he, where he talked about how Evo was better. Yeah. Right now, and he was like, oh, you were so good after coming back from your right leg injury. He's like... Jabali. Jabali's like, yeah, it, dude, it was my left leg. Oh, oh, really? Thank you for the information. Just kicks Jabali in the leg. I was like, oh, my God. As hard as he could. I was like, this is the best. I got to ask, did you pop as hard as I did when Jabali was using Mega Ran's theme? Oh, yeah, and, and, had, and had Mega Ran's jacket on. Yeah. Oh, yeah. It was, and the whole time, I'm just sitting there like a proud friend, just like, this is my buddy song. He did it. He, he did it. We just ate Bubba Gump with the guy that made this. This song is so good. <laughs> anyway, then but, uh, uh, yeah, going back to the Nyla Rose match. Apparently, the guy I was sitting next to was in the same tribe as Nyla, uh-huh. and so he was like, "I'm gonna look her up." And I immediately had flashes of like, "I'm about to have to become the trans rights hero because I think that what's gonna happen will happen." And like, they made one or two transphobic jokes, and I'm like. <laughs> Getting ready to step in, and then they stopped. And I'm like, "All right, you course corrected, and I appreciate you for it." Hell yeah! Uh, by the way, I did I did correctly guess Nyla Rose beating one Japanese woman with another Japanese woman. Yeah, beating up a, a lady with another lady. Uh, surprisingly, though, the one woman we didn't suspect to get the victory got the victory. And Rio picked up the win in a, in an amazing. That was probably like the best. That's the best women's match I've ever seen live. Oh yeah, yeah. Like. Like Nyla, Nyla is is way better. But I will never doubt Nyla Rose again. She did some. She did a top rope like, n- like knee strike to a draped opponent over the top rope halfway across the ring, and like everybody popped so hard for that because because Rio sold it like death. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Like ra- oh, that was so. I, I'm learning that. I think my new favorite wrestling is Joshi wrestling. I'm gonna, gonna have to put money into stardom. Is that what you're talking? Yeah, about? yeah, yeah. That's welcome to the new Fight Boys, the official stardom podcast. Yeah, that was really good. Yeah, Rio with the uh, like a leg roll through, like pin. Yeah, like a uh, real quick pin, and then Nyla just beats the shit out of her. Well, she tries to, and then then Yuka helps Rio, and then Rio pushes Yuka off, and then everybody still loves Yuka at the end. 
uh, because, like I said, Americans are a whore for like some like a woman with high energy. Like it's just, yeah, yeah. It's, it's catnip. Uh, next match was Fatal Four Way. Fatal Four Way. That's right. Uh, MJF came out, cut a promo. During, cut a five, like cut a five minute promo during uh, which we're all chanting "You suck," and he goes, "Oh well, guess what? The woman whose basement you live in, she swallows." So, uh, and he was like, "Are you really gonna talk?" While I'm talking, yeah, yeah, yeah. He's like, I'll also, guys, 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 we love video, video games, video. I loved video games until I lost my virginity, and the entire crowd begins to boo. And I'm like, oh god, so like, good. Like the whole, I wish I could remember all of it, but just the whole way through it, I was just like, oh, this is. This is well. Yeah. Well, the weird thing for me is he's so good that people are starting to cheer him. But I just I want to turn around and be like, guys, don't do that. Don't this go. isn't what he wants. Boo him in public, and then behind closed doors, be like, God, he's so fucking good. Be like, be like your own father, like outwardly showing no pride whatsoever, but inside there is. There's that pride growing that yeah. you know is there. Uh, then freaking uh, Jungle Boy. Jungle, Jungle Boy came out on the shoulders of Luchasaurus, which I, I was very happy for. I, I was. I was so happy with that. Uh, Jimmy Havoc came out. His theme music was creepy. I think he's gonna. I think I'm pretty sure he's gonna be heel once like the show starts. Once the show starts, yeah, yeah. yeah. Like he's. It's just gonna be like this weird. His music was almost like Twilight Zone esque. Like or like the visual, like a metal Twilight Zone. Uh, no, almost. no, Black Mirror. It was Black Mirror esque. We were just like something is off here, and I'm in danger. Yeah, yeah. yeah. And then of course. He's a horse! He's a horse! Yeah, nobody chanted that. That was the only thing I got wrong out of my crowd predictions. Um, but, yeah, that, that was that was a solid match. I really feel like uh, everybody got their shine except yeah. for Jimmy Havoc. Like, he, he, he did, he did, like, he did F you... Jungle Boy onto Luchasaurus. And that then, was great. And then I'm pretty sure he did a hundred percent shoot like top rope double stomp to MJF. Because you know usually like for whenever like like Finn does it and like you you see his like his knees go like a little And then he like in. he'll fall backwards. He'll fall back and like fall forward. No no no. And just just straight <laughs> onto M. Jeff, and I was just like, you know what? I'm actually okay with that. In, in like K Fame, I'm okay with that. Yeah, yeah. Uh he is going to keep the acid rainmaker as his finisher. That makes he, me so happy. He yelled out, right, but he didn't hit it, obviously. He uh, tried twice. He tried twice. And then I did love M. Jeff's counter, which was just like three stooges double poke to the eye. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, and Hangman is just he's got the rocket strapped to him at oh, this yeah. point. Like he did he did real well. I'm pretty sure at uh I'm pretty sure last minute match for Fight for the Fallen is gonna be MJF versus Hangman. Yeah, so I'll get to see that. That'll be nice. Oh, uh, that was that was that was a very that was a very good match. Uh, yeah. After that, what, all of the matches were great matches. No, there was there was no. It's like what was the what was the worst match? Okay, the worst match was probably like Leva versus Ali, and like that's by default. That was by that was by default, and like even then that was like what like three stars. That was like a, that was a serviceable match. There yeah. Was, there was like it was technically fine. There was an angle to it, like maybe like two and a half. Like that's but that's like the that's being. Like, un, non like not being generous to it at all. Yeah. yeah. Uh, let's see here. How, how many matches up? There's six. So that means that the next match up was Cody versus Darby. Was it not? Yeah, Cody versus Darby. Darby Helen, who came came to the ring carrying carrying a body bag with Cody's name spray painted yeah. on it. Also, can I just say I was in a section of the crowd with, you know those, I'll say usually female wrestling fans. Who really love Jimmy Havoc and Darby Allen and those dark kind of characters? You mean you mean people that you, you, you mean emo fangirls? I mean Gazi, yes. Yeah, uh, yeah, yeah. <laughs> um, yeah, I had one of those, and we all started chanting for Darby Allen just because she was so adorable. We were like, her voice needs to be heard, Darby Allen. I mean, I was cheering for him anyway because, as I suspected, he. <laughs> He, he took the Japanese route to getting over, which was, I'm just going to take as more abuse than is necessary or seemingly humanly possible. I'm going to get zipped up in a body bag I get, brought to the ring and then, and then get, get disaster kicked. In the face. In the, just right in the face. Uh, that match ended in a way that we weren't expecting, uh, which was... Fucking time limit draw. But uh, uh, what I enjoyed it. Yeah, yeah. I really enjoyed the it. Whole, I, I don't like how much they telegraphed it because they're like however many minutes. Like they had before that, 
but like they were. They, yeah, well, they, all of the matches they announced like ten minutes have passed. Ten, 10 minutes, minutes now remain. When I got fifteen minutes, five, five remaining, I was like, oh, this is gonna end in a time limit draw. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Uh, I was like, because if it was gonna, because if it was gonna be like, you know, ending before twenty, they wouldn't do it. But yeah, no, Cody, like, one second, he needed one more second, didn't get it. Then fucking, fucking Sean Spears shows up. And beats everybody up with a chair. No, 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 he doesn't beat everybody up. He fucking unprotected headshots Cody with a chair. I looked at it, like, I saw he, he, he picked the chair up, and I was, and like, I had this horrible, like precog moment I was like he is going to hit Cody in the head with that yeah and like I was like there was like the you know like the no yeah cause I cause you know after all we know now about fucking like head trauma I was like why would you do this and then Cody gets up and his blonde hair is red it's yeah. just bright red because Sean wrapped it around the side cause Cody turned his head probably instinctively so he got it right like above the, back behind the ear yeah yeah and like he Sean destroyed that chair. That chair was fucked. That's how hard he unloaded that. Before we finish talking about this, I will say the match was very, very good. No, that match was amazing. Because Cody, like, Cody, he is not a great technical wrestler by any means. That's why he never did well in New Japan, because he, that's not his strength. But in an American setting with an American audience, yeah. like, and with, like, a more, especially with smaller. Oh, Darby. Darby's, Darby's my MV- MVP of the night, I think. Yeah, I yeah. loved what Darby was doing in yeah, the yeah. ring. Oh, by the way, Darby Allen with the most brutal spot. And by the way, there were two there were two hardcore non-sanctioned matches. With the most brutal spot, which was a fucking coffin drop, like, backdrop onto the apron. That Cody, yeah. that Cody rolls the way out of the way and just hits the apron, just flat, just straight hits it. Like I saw him going up, and I, oh my god, I didn't know a human body could make a splat noise, oh. but it did. Look on Cody's face afterwards, where I think he realized the spot that just fell. He was like, you know what? I, like he was second guessing like a lot oh, of no, things. No. Yeah, because there was a moment earlier in the match where he, I think he was trying to throw Darby into the guard or into in, the uh, into, into the into the post, and then Darby just sailed through. The the second and third rope straight to the floor. And like, Cody's it, face looked like, if he's dead, he's dead, I guess. Yeah, Fuck, what looked, the... I, I didn't know if that was acting or if he was legitimately concerned. I would have to watch the video, like the... Yeah, the, the replay. AEW video. Um, but I will say probably my favorite comedy moment of the night came after uh, Sean attacked Cody. Oh, M. Jeff ran to the ring. Oh, M. J. F. just like bolt. He had his nightmare family jacket on, bolted. I think SCU were there checking on Cody. He throws them out of the way. He picks Kaz up and moves him, and then Kaz looks at him like, "Really, dude? Really? Yeah, yeah." Like he took a moment to pick up the chair and pretend to chase away Sean with it. Yeah, uh, that was that was that was a very mm-hmm. good. Uh, and then we get to the uh, the God, that probably. That's got even after Fighter Fest. Or, no, after Double or Nothing. I think the I think the six men between the, the elite and like Lucha Brothers. Yeah. And their cha- and their kid. Uh, <laughs> okay, so let me let me so like you know Lucha Brothers and Laredo Kid come out and I was like oh yeah because earlier in the night they they were doing a fake documentary during the the pre show. It was a the Fighter Fest the, documentary. Yeah, the Fighter Fest documentary during which like you know they were like oh there's all these things that went wrong but then. Uh, Kenny's like, yeah, 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 I'll make it up to you. I got them working on the gear. It's going to be amazing. And then Matt's like, so Kenny totally came through on the gear. You guys are going to love it. But he blew half the budget on the gear. Uh, The gear was fucking... Um, Well, hold on. Before that, can I just say, was it weird to you that the Lucha Brothers came out in gray tracksuits? I was like, did their luggage not make it? And they're just like... Why are they dressed like Jane Lynch in Glee? (laughs) It was, it was it was very confusing, but yeah, no, no, we got we got Street Fighter Elite with the Bucks coming out to a bit tuned version of their song. God, that was good. That was so good. Fucking, fucking. By the way, continuing the Mario Luigi of the Young Bucks. Fucking Matt is Ryu and Nick is Ken, and uh, they did that. And then some dude runs out and like starts like fa- like doing the keyboard for the bit tunes. Oh okay. yeah. And then and then the f- I thought they were going to super kick him. Yeah, yeah. No, no, no. Even better. A Akuma a fucking like finisher. The fucking like screen goes black. Every, all the all the, the characters come across and then there's just K- Kenny Kuma. Kenny Kuma, yeah. Like, like just standing there with the fucking symbol on his back and everything. By the way, fun fact. During his time in DDT and independent wrestling, one of Kenny's nicknames was Master the Master 
picture of the dark Hado. Yeah, yeah. And I was just like, oh, we brought it full circle. Yeah, I was, I was, I was screaming. Mm-hmm. It was, it was so good. And that match was amazing. The fucking they gave the they gave the Lucha Brothers like a lot of offense, considering. Oh yeah, and, like, yeah. Everything I was like, they were dominating in the beginning. It was a great. The, there were so many great spots. It, the it, Lucha Brothers actually did better tag team wrestling than the Elite. Like, oh yeah, they, yeah, yeah. Their combos were fucking Tight. flawless, flawless, like fluid. It was, it was so impressive. Um, one of my favorite over the top spots in wrestling is Pentagon Junior stopping someone. Very over the top, removing one glove. Yeah, yeah. And then Zero mirroring them in the face and then getting all up in their face about it. It is. And he did it to Kenny. And he did it to Kenny. And he didn't. And, and I, I was like, I feel like this is this is payback for All In. Oh yeah, yeah. <laughs> I was like, this this feels very. Oh no! Like even after the match was over. Yeah, they were like, yeah, yeah, yeah. We got to do this one on one thing again. Oh, uh, it was, it was so, it was so good. Like everything about it was so fucking. Like quality, um, um, yeah, yeah, yeah. Like afterwards, I felt so drained. I was like, I, f- I have to walk this off. Like I can't. I gotta I'll go smoke a cigarette. Yeah, you gotta Fuck. smoke a cigarette. Like it, it, it's like after you give blood, you feel drained. I was like I need some cookies and some juice. Like oh my yeah. god, dude. Whoo, whoo, my gosh. And uh, oh. then finally, in the main event of the evening. No, it wasn't the. It's technically. The the six man was the was the main event of the sanctioned yeah, thing. Yeah, because afterwards, uh, Justin Roberts like, this is the end of the AEW show, and everyone in the, the crowd sanctioned show is yeah. doing is like, when the lights go off, the show will be over. However, when the lights come back on, there will be an unsanctioned match. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And everybody was like, oh, I was like, that's brilliant. That's the most. Uh, I, I like. I took a second. I was like, that's. Yeah, yeah. I wanted to slow clap. And it just makes me happy to know Joey Janela technically main evented the second AEW show ever. Oh, yeah. I mean, you know, well, Moxley didn't. He just happened to be there. Let's be honest. Look, he's a bad, bad boy. He's a bad, bad I sympathize with him. He, he's a bad, bad boy who wore, like, he had, you know, he had the 80s neon, like, he, the, 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 the cerulean blue, like, the hot pink. The black. Max Moon pants. Yeah, I called them Max Moon pants. And, like, he and, he and Moxley had this... <laughs> so there were a lot of really good spots in the match involving tables. But let me break down most of this match. It was like... Barbed uh, wire. No, no, no. It, the, the match consisted of uh, uh, brutal fighting, or like beat down, go into the ring and get something, use that thing, beat down other person. That was it. That was the entire match. They just kept going and they were like, okay, you're yeah. down. Like they got 18. There was a whole hardware store into that fucking ring. It was Joey Janela gets beat up, flips off John Moxley. John Moxley gets mad, beats him up. Then he there flips him off. Wire, there was a barbed wire chair completely wrapped, and Joey Janela hit John Moxley in the back with it. I didn't think he would actually hit him. It was amazing. Yeah, I don't think it was full on barbed wire. I think it might have been gimmick because, like, there would have been a lot more blood if it was legit. I mean, no, it's gimmick. It, like, it's it's wrestling barbed wire, not real barbed wire. Yeah, yeah. yeah. This isn't the '90s. This isn't CZ Dub. Uh, by the way, I did call it because, despite the fact that there was this wasn't a ladder match, Joey Janela brought out a ladder. Yeah. Got on top of that ladder, John Moxley, Wait, and also despite. Despite the fact that this was a live presentation for AEW, which has corporate backers and all that, Joey John, Janela. J- no, no, no. Jimmy Hammock already flipped off M. Jeff during. That, oh, that's right. During that thing, Joey did proudly stand atop that ladder and deliver to our beautiful Fago be soaked souls. To be fair, he did say the word "fuck" away from the hard cam. Oh yeah, yeah. So it was "fuck." this and then he looked forward and said shit so they couldn't see it and then just elbow drops from the top of a ladder onto a table on the floor through there were two tables next to each other too so like fuck Joey Janela's hip because he landed hip on the other one like I there was like I thought that I thought like there was a I am the table like because that thing did not get yeah yeah, yeah. my uh my favorite part well not my favorite part about this was the fact that the crowd around me was like put it on the camera so we can watch it live I'm like guess what you're watching he, it live. He elbow dropped him through the table. What else do you think happened? Yeah. It's not like they went down and then a, a ghost came out. Uh, John Moxley took off Joey Janela's shoes so that he could then dump him on the thumbtacks he had on the floor. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And then it, to to show how much bigger of a badass he was, delivered the fucking uh, Death Rider onto the thumbtacks, so which meant he went back, back flat bump, 
back onto thumbtacks. And all that happened to Joey was he got his head sent straight into some thumbtacks. Well, he also got that that like vertical release suplex yeah, yeah. onto it where he landed on his side. That was horrible. So John John wins the match, and then afterwards, uh, Kenny remembered that John fucked him over last month, and just proceeds to beat the ever loving shit. People were booing to like, boo. He's beating up. And I was like, you realize. That in this company, Kenny Omega is the face, right? Like, yeah. Of the company. Of everything. Of everything. He's the he's the flag bearer of this company. And then he just starts doing goofy shit. Like oh, yeah, he's he, beat. he he hit him that he hit him with an electric guitar because he had like the fake like the setup for the bands for Fire, Fighter Fest. He hit him. That was not a gimmicked electric guitar. He just hit John Moxley with a straight up electric guitar. My favorite was when he started doing like bow staff moves with the drumsticks yeah. and just beating the shit out of him with it. Yeah. And then everybody thinks it's over. Like uh, freaking John's being carried up the entrance ramp by Bryce and somebody. He shoves both of them off, and the whole time I was like, Bryce does not deserve that. I was I was like, oh, he's fully healed now. He beat up Bryce. And then, so, like, there were two tubes. There was one that was that led, like, back to the area near where the fighting had happened, and then there was another one coming from the other direction. That was the one that Kenny then ran out of. Like, he had to have sprinted around this thing with a freaking trash can. Yeah. He just b- beats the crap out of John. I was like, ah, I bet you wish you had kept those referees around to use these human shields. You piece of shit. And then he Fucking then he then he death riders John onto the fucking like oh yeah onto it we end the show show was great and we've arrived uh, home but before we do do you have any heels or faces this week uh, I mean the only heel I have is is AEW for bringing back the unprotected hair, headshot. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, because the whole time I was like, that was a horrible... I, I didn't need that... No, no. Yeah. I was against everything about that. My uh, heel of the week was the asshole in front of me, who at one point... It was weird, the setup. So I accidentally sat like was where he was, and he was just like, hey, buddy, this is my seat. All right, man. I'm like, are you sure? Because I'm in 12, and that's my seat. And he's like, no, no, you don't understand. We're in row D. And I'm like, oh, no, no, it's all good. And like his wife is politely trying to be like, oh, it's all right. It's easy to get confused. And I'm like, okay. Then as the show went on, he started yelling at people around us like, hey, my family's here. You need to get back up. He was just like, Paul, Bl-. and it, fun fact, family did not give a shit about the show. <laughs> like the son was watching Minecraft videos and the mom was just doing whatever she wanted to do. At one point, this was during like, a, there was a, a lull. Two old people who were clearly tired from standing, I don't know if they didn't know where their seats were or what, came up and just sat down like, we're tired. And he goes, hey, that's our seats. We're going to have to ask you to move. I'm sorry. And I'm like, what the fuck? They're like 70 years old. Let them sit. But yeah, that's my heel of the week is Paul Paul Blart man, family cop who fucked up everyone's life around us. <laughs> this summer, two men save the world. From who you ask? Everything. Invading robo penises. This show is not about those two men. <laughs> this show's just a load of BS. The show where Blake Tanner and Scotty Moore make up dumbass movies like that. We're your personal think tank. We're your two white guys, which fills the quota for a mm-hmm. podcast, I think. And we're just going to be here to have a good time and talk about sauerkraut. That's right. Except no substitutes, ladies and gentlemen, because this is that pure, uncut Yes. <laughs> good, good, uncut. All right, we've talked Fighter Fest. We've talked the copious amount of alcohol that we drank. But now, I think it's only fair that we turn things over to Captain Tibbs and Silver Spoon for another episode of JWF Monday Night War. And make sure, if you're not subscribed to the Fight Boys YouTube channel, make sure to subscribe because we faced off against the Matt Mania boys once again when we were down in Daytona. So we got Captain Tibbs and Silves to do some commentary over that. And that should be out this week sometime. So make sure you get ready for that, ladies and gentlemen, with this episode of JWF Monday Night War. 
Welcome, ladies and gentlemen, to JWF Monday Night War. I'm your host, Silver Spoon, joined as always by a man who has gone through more toe jam in a week than the entire tri-state area. It's Captain Tams. Oh, I don't need any more toe jam until next year. That's all right, Tibbs, because we are right off the heels of a fantastic pay-per-view known as Toe Jam. And we had some amazing matches. We saw the Dylan face off against Momoa Curry in a devastating two out of three falls match. We saw the Hammer Man, Best Mojo Gruff, in less than a minute. I mean, Tibbs, that was an amazing match. I never thought the Hammer Man had it in him. I always knew he did, so he's the best. He's the Hammer Man. How did you doubt him? And then, of course, probably one of the most shocking things I've seen in a JWF ring in a long time. Scott Moore, one half of the Snack Daddies, the former number one contenders to the JWF Tag Team Championships. He turned. He turned on his own tag team partner, aligning himself with the BS. Now, of course, we know that the BS, they've had ties to Scott Moore in the past. Do you think there was some collusion? What do you think is going on with Scott Moore? I mean, Sills, I think that Scott Moore finally had the realization that family is greater than anything. Blood is thicker than water. And the only thing keeping Guy Vietti and Scott Moore together was a little bit of water. But Scott Moore and his son, Scotty Moore, that's all blood right there. And I think that Scott Moore finally realized that. That's right, Tibbs, but I mean, we can we can theorize, we can come up with our own ideas, or we can go to the ring, because Scott Moore has come down to the ring, and he is joined by Scotty Moore. He's joined by Blake Tanner, the JWF Tag Team Champions, and in fact, Emily Moore, the entire Moore clan is in the ring right now. It's filled to the brim with the Moore family, so let's hear what Scott's got to say about his actions at Toji. Hey, get that baby out of the ring. So... A lot of people have been asking me just what the hell I was thinking during that tag team match. And what was I thinking of joining the BS after weeks and weeks of abuse from them? And look, I know a lot of these keyboard warriors out there like to come up with their theories, with their ideas. And they're going to say this was all planned from the beginning. That my son, that he had corrupted me, turned me against my own partner. But you see, the truth is... The only man who turned me against Guy Fieri was Guy Fieri himself. Because I went into that match with one goal and one goal only, and that was to win the JWF Tag Team Championships. But it seemed that Guy had a little bit of a different plan. He wanted to get all of his moments in, make himself look real good in front of the JWF universe. He wanted to abuse my son, beat him within an inch of his life, suplex him through tables, toss him through steel steps. And you know something? When I looked down and I saw my son in a puddle of his own blood reaching out for his partner desperately trying to make that tag, I had to do what any good father would do. I stepped in that ring and I took care of business. You hear that? These are the words that old Scotty Moore, I've been waiting to hear my father say for my entire life because for once in his sad little life, my father took a stand and he fought for himself and I stand here today damn proud of the father that raised me. Proud of him for fighting what he believes in. Fighting for the same thing that everyone in this ring right here believes in today. And that's family. You see a lot of you people in the JWF universe. You might have been booing us during that match. You might have been booing me, booing Blake. But that doesn't matter. Because I couldn't give a damn about any of you. Because the only people that I care about were sitting at home on the couch cheering as they watched their husband, they watched their father do what he was supposed to do, and that's retain his JWF championship. So as I stand here in this ring today, my wife and child on one side, my brother, my father on the other, I'd like to put a notice out to the entire JWF locker room. A notice to anybody that tries to mess with my family, to anybody who tries to mess with the Moore dynasty. 
If you fight one of us, you fight all of us. Well, Tibbs, it seems like Mr. Cash in the bag, Scotty Moore, he's made a proclamation. And let me tell you something, we thought the BS were bad before, but now that he's formed this, this dynasty of sorts in the ring, Scotty Moore could be unstoppable. What do you think? I don't know, Sills. It's just a real nice family photo right there in the ring. It's like a reunion. I, I think that's just all this has got to be, right? Well... Here's hoping, Tibbs, because let me tell you something. Scotty Moore, he already has the cash in the bag briefcase, one of the most dangerous tools in the arsenal of a normal wrestler. But with all of these extra, with his brother Blake Tanner, with his father Scott Moore on his side, Scotty Moore is practically unstoppable, and I'm afraid for the JWF championship. But speaking of champions, Tibbs, let's move on to talk about what, what had to have been your favorite match of Toe Jam as the Hammer Man defeated Mojo Gruff hastily in less than one minute, winning the JWF Captain's Championship, his first match, his first championship he's ever won in this company. Tibbs, how did you feel? Well, so was, uh, I, I couldn't tell you how I felt. It was just the most magnificent sense of ecstasy seeing the Hammerman come out, just get all of his shit and lay Mojo Gruff out on the table Cut him up like a big slice of meat, and then just come in for the kill. I don't. I don't think there was a table. Or chop, the, chop, baby. All right, Tibbs, but you know something, Mojo Gruff. He does still have a rematch coming up in the future for that title, and he's been backstage and he's been saying some dark things about the Hammer Man. Let's have a listen. Everyone's been asking me. How did it feel? How did it feel to be beaten and broken down by the Hammerman? My title taken away from me in mere seconds. I have to say it felt exactly like I needed it to. Because my focus has never been on the JWF Captain's Championship. No, my focus, as it always has been, is on my master and his plans. For you see, one of the souls meant to be sacrificed was always mine. One of the bodies that were meant to be broken was always mine. And so I let the hammer man do what he does best. I let him beat me and break me in the center of that ring. And my master smiled upon me that day. But unfortunately for the hammer man, my master is not done with him. Because... As of today, I have forfeited my rematch clause for the captain's championship, and I've instead given it to the most powerful tool my master has provided me with. The sweeping wave of destruction and hellfire known simply to you mortals in the JWF universe as Honeypot. What? So Hammerman, at excessive force... Your soul will be ours, and it will be forcibly ripped from your body by the beast, by the demon, by the entity known as Honeypot. Well, Tibbs, um, gotta say, I think the celebration's over for the Hammer Man, because it looks like he's got him one hell of a match coming up against the demon Honeypot, and I'm honestly scared for him, Tibbs. So this is more than you'll understand. This war that will be fought in the ring, it will not be fought by weapons, by fighting. It will be fought by the will of men versus the anger of the demons and the hellfire. And there is only one person that I would entrust to carry that sword of humanity. To defeat this demon, and his name is the Hammer Man. And it's more of a hammer than a sword. I feel like I really messed the metaphor up there. Well, well, Tibbs, I gotta agree with you. If we've seen anything in the past few months, the Hammer Man has made it clear that he is a top contender in this company. He's one of the strongest men we've got on this roster. And we've seen him face off against Honeypot in the past. He's done well against him. It's just a matter of if he can get that big W when they face off. 
But speaking of getting the big W, let's talk about a man who got two W's in a two out of three falls match at the Toe Jam pay-per-view. And that is, of course, the god of law, god of the sea, the god of the JWF, Momoa Curry. And, and Tibbs, let me tell you something. I thought Dylan had the match won. I mean, he won the first victory. He beat Momoa down, broken him, beat him to a point where I didn't think he could make it back up to his feet. And it almost seemed like the Dylan's hubris was coming into play during the match. G going doing top rope moves that we've never seen him done before. We, we saw him do a bunch of things that the Dylan's not used to doing. Do you think ego played into his loss at Tojin? Sills, I don't know so much that it is ego. It seems that the Dylan was trying to change his style up more, it felt like it. And I think that he would just... Honestly, it may have just been an underestimation of just how... How much fire Momoa Curry has lit under him right now. The first time they fought, it was it was Momoa Curry at one of his heights, but he was starting to come down. This is a light, hot Momoa. And let me tell you, you need to blow on a white hot Momoa before you can take a bite out of him. I, I'm not sure what the metaphor is, Tibbs, but you know something, Momoa Curry... We got to know what's next for him. We got to know who he's going to be facing next. So he's going down to our ring right now. So let's see what's next. You know something? Old Momoa's <clears throat> starting to miss the good old days. The days when I could just come out to this ring, face off with some no-name ham and egger, and beat his ass in ten seconds. <coughs> because let me tell all of you something about that locker room back there. It is filled to the brim with some of the most talented men I've ever faced in this ring. The Hammer Man, the Dylan, I could go on. And after our match at Toe Jam, after that two out of three falls match, I realized if I want to make this title run something historic, if I want to bring this title back up to the prestige it once had, I'm going to have to work harder than I ever have before because these guys are on a completely different level from me. And I, Tibbs, it's the Dylan, the, the former number one contender coming down to the ring right now. And he almost looks sad coming up to Momoa. What, what's going on with the Dylan? I don't know, but it just brings a tear to my eye. Well, he's getting in the ring right now. Let's hear what he's got to say to Momoa. Stop it. Stop it. You look me in the eyes. Shut up. Don't you dare try to pull this shit right now. Don't you dare try to glad hand all the boys in the back. Don't you dare try to glad hand me, try to talk us up about how good we are, how everybody's on a different level. You shut your mouth. Don't you dare try to take away from what you've done. Don't you dare try to take away from what I've done in this business don't you dare try to take away from my wins or yours. See, all I am disappointed with the outcome of last night. It doesn't change the fact that you managed to survive me. You managed to win despite my best efforts. And while I am disappointed that that championship isn't currently mine. I can look you in the eyes, man to man, and tell you that I respect you. Tibbs, I don't think this is something I think we've ever heard from the Dylan before. A little bit of humbleness coming from the Lord of the Smart Side. What do you think? I, I feel like there's a crack forming in the wall of the Dylan right there. I, he may just be letting some of his humanity out. That's right, and both of these men shaking hands in the middle of the ring. But wait, Tibbs, it's it's the music of of your son, Chuck Tibbs. Charlie, he's coming out to the ring. What the hell is Chuck doing here? Okay, okay, listen here. I really love this moment that you're having out there, guys. I, you're talking some great stuff, and I really, really do understand the respect that y'all have out there, but... You can have all the fun you want in this ring, but I I just think that we all need to bring you back to the facts. I want to get to the facts that not only me, but there's tons of other guys in the back 
that feel like they deserve a shot at that title, mostly me because I came out first, and because where have I been? I have been jostling and fighting to get a shot on this show since Wrestlepalooza, but where is Charlie been? Charlie hasn't gotten to come out as Chuck on this show and prove that he is worthy of fighting for that title uh, over the past few months you've been facing some of your greatest rivals Momoa Curry I, I don't have any of that you're facing the Dylan you face Brunch Boy you're all of your greatest hits but I think it's time I think it's time that you come out and you face some fresh blood because well I think about something from my childhood. Now I, I think about how there's no greater rivalry in JWF history than Momoa Curry versus my father, Captain Tibbs. And I think that everybody out here would agree that we need to see something like that again, except with new blood, a new upgrade, Momoa Curry versus... Me, Chuck, Tibbs. Okay, look, I know in the past I've been bad about just, like, letting you guys come out here. And you, you, you guys think you can just challenge for a title shot now. Is that what you're thinking? You think you're just entitled to what, what's mine? You, you do realize that you are the worst wrestler on the roster, right? Well, I... No, no, I mean, no, don't even look at that. I think that's don't a little disingenuous. I mean, I've got a chance to prove myself. And then I'm going to do this. I'm going to do it. 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 Get in your corner. All right. Old Tim's going to have to come down here. And I have to come down from his spot and get up from the commentary table. And I have to say something to all of you now. Or I'll find like a bunch of spoiled children. Now... I want to say, Charlie, Chuck, my son, you, you're right. You got a point. Maybe more people need to come out. Come out and challenge for the title. I mean, you're also right that me and Momoa, we had us a hell of a rivalry back in the day. But I want you to think before you come out. You come out and you challenge an actual god. You remember that rivalry damn near killed me. You think you can handle that? You think you can handle going toe-to-toe -to -toe with a god? You could get killed, boy. Is that... Is that worth it to you? To get that title? Anything's worth it. Alright. That's how it is. <laughs> Damn it, you're a stubborn son of a bitch just like me. Alright. How about this? You want a title shot. You haven't earned it. So why don't we see if you can earn a title shot. Next week, you're going to have to get that title shot against a... Let's say somebody else who's just as worthy to fight Momoa Curry for that title. Somebody who just fought Momoa Curry. As a matter of fact, all right, Chuck, next week, you're going to be competing in a number one contendership match against a man you know all too well. And that man is right here in this ring, the Dylan. Oh, oh, Tibbs, T Tibbs won the world. We've got an astounding match next week. We're going to see. Are we going to see the Dylan versus Momoa? Chuck versus Momoa? I mean, these are both dream matches in JWF history to possibly see right here, Tibbs. <sighs> How do you I feel? Had, had to run back from the ring. I'm sorry, I got a little excited there. I feel like this is... This is what's best for everybody. In the JWF. That's <sighs> all right, Tibbs. And in order to find out what happens next with Momoa Curry, what, who becomes the number one contender, what happens next with Scott Moore, with Mojo Gruff, with Honeypot, everyone's going to have to tune in next time to JWF Monday Night War. So, Dylan, it's been an episode. It has. Uh, what did you learn this week? I, uh, 
I I learned that you know much like every uh, every every man man in America, uh, you know Matt Mania loves uh, loves chicken and ass. Chicken and ass. <laughs> And I learned that not much can stop Cody Rhodes other than an unprotected share shot to the dome. Oh, God. <laughs> so painful to watch. So you can be found on Twitter at Dick and Stormy. Yeah, which, which Mega Ram popped for because he forgot. About yeah, it. I can be found at Scotty Mo. I'm just going to future Scotty take over from here. Well, sorry, I forgot. I didn't realize that he wanted me to, to end the show. Okay, well, remember to find the show online at a load of pure BS dot com. That's where you can find uh, all the other shows from a load of BS to fun fiction. They're all available for you to check out. And remember to support the show, whether that be on Patreon, like the Patreon saint of Fight Boys. That is, of course, Mr. Ghazi. You can support at patreon.com slash a load of BS. And also you can pick up some sick Fight Boys merch at merch dot a load of pure BS dot com. But if you can't support us there we understand just leave us a review on itunes subscribe to our youtube channel send us some feedback on twitter however you want to get in touch with us it's always awesome to hear from you guys and as always you can find us at a load of pure bs.com step up to the merch table at merch.aloadofpurebs.com find us on facebook donate to the patreon subscribe on youtube and remember to follow us on twitter at fight boys show chuck taylor because when you're a fight boy you're a fight boy for life